it, when I first got introduced to what a CNC machine was, I tried finding it on YouTube. I thought one of these people might have had an old clip of it. It was a school video that came out in 16 millimeter. It was shown to us in 1976, I think it was. Could have been 75, but I think it was 76. It was from the Cincinnati Millicron Corporation. And they had this new machine that had three axes that were controlled by a computer. And it was a milling machine. I believe it was a horizontal mill, um, similar to what we've got here, but controlled by a computer. And it had a tool changer. So it was, it was pretty high tech, fancy, and it flat impressed all of us. And I was sold that CNC was the answer to be doing things. Well, what they did, they put the part on the machine and I think the part came out in like five minutes. And it took the journeyman machinist that had a manual machine, he laid this part out and he, for all the holes to drill and a couple pieces to mill off flat, and it took him two hours and a half or something. You know, I mean, way, way longer. The fallacy of that that didn't dawn on me until I'd been in the business, actually, of machining for a long time, the comparison started out with the machine that already had a program written, already had the sharp tools in the caddy loaded, already offset for each of the tools. The journeyman machinist, uh, he was not even given a dividing head or anything else to help him divide out stuff. He was not given a digital readout. He was not given an hour even to look at the drawings in advance. He was given the drawings cold and a piece of material. They even pre-selected a piece of material that was kind of wonky and as opposed to if he was going to look at this as a production job, he might actually have done several layouts on a bar in, a, in advance and then sawn them off later. They eliminated all of the options, gave him no time for the information first, and put him in control against the computer. So it was very biased, much more than I realized at the time. At the time, I was just like, wow, look at this. This is what we all need to do. And CNCs are good. I've ran them. But let me come back to my example of where I really see a big difference in this. And let's say that we were making a flanged hub similar to this. Instead of having these uh, just holes here for uh, studs to go through, let's say that these were all drilled and tapped holes. You know, so if we we're doing this, we didn't have a dividing head. We would have to come through here, lay them all out, and we would be extremely slow, like what was shown in that video. If we had a dividing head, we could put this up on the machine, and we could drill, center drill our holes, and then we drill them, and then we tap them. So we do this with all of our one spindle, where the CNC machine can come in here, and it's going to change the tools a lot quicker. So it's going to come in here and go zip, 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 drilling them. Zip, 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 zip. Uh, after it's center drilled them to drill them through. Zip, 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 tap them all. So it's, it's going to be quicker. It's going to save us some time if we're doing a lot of these. Again, figuring that we didn't have to t spend time programming it. Because if we had to spend time programming it, it's a lot of times easier, especially when you leave a dividing head just on a machine most of the time. Usually that is either whichever way we need it at last, horizontal or vertical. We usually leave it there because if you don't need to take it off, leave it on, have it ready to go. Which some people do when they're doing a lot of manual stuff on CNC. And I think that's the people that legitimately, some of them just like to argue, but there are ones that legitimately say that they can do a one-off job really quick. And they might have a tool caddy that's set up with 20 or 30 standard tools that they use all the time. Of course, now they're relegated to what they write and build being within that 20 or 30 tools as opposed to 10,000 tools that I've got here in the shop, which can sometimes be a little bit quicker because you've got the tool that's closer to what the job needs. That's, that's minor stuff. We're, we're talking about comma or a slash in our 
our writing is something as far as that goes. That's, that's a minor difference between the two. There are times like that where you can have relatively quick on CNC for certain jobs. Not for every job though. You know, it just, it doesn't happen. Uh, one of the things with that too, before I get into the rest of my example here, that really annoys me is many times today you'll see items that, as people say, you need a CNC for certain curves, shapes, compounded. Um, Single axis shapes, curves on a lathe, a lot of times I've done those with tracers. We've got hydraulic tracers here. And you can do a lot of stuff with a tracer to, as far as shapes go that you don't need the CNC for. Uh, it's simpler. It still takes time to, to set it up though. And you've got to write the pattern. A CNC is quicker to do that than a tracer, but a tracer is an option when a curve is needed on a shaft. On the other hand of that though, I see so much stuff today designed to where for no reason there are complex shapes to it. You might have a piece that has a big S curve in it and there's a groove cut out here and an O-ring that seals on it and the older version of it is straight with a straight and a little face cut in there for an O-ring to go. You know, just simple straight. And how do you deal with that in the manual machining world even for repair, for one-offs, when you don't have a CNC machine to do that with, or you don't want to take the time to make a template and do this fancy shape that wasn't needed for uh, making this thing and putting it back into use because it was designed with this fancy curve that had to fit in there in the groove. Well, simple, you design it like the old times. You just drill the hole out bigger, you make a flat step on it, you make a place for the O-ring, you put in the O-ring that you want to have in there, and you just kind of go, why? You know, well, they did it to make it specific to their brand and to feel better about their self because they engineered something. Whether it needed to be engineered or not, they engineered something. There's reasons for, for complex curves and things that benefit, that make them better. I'm all for that. <clears throat> when they do it as they do most of the times today just because we can like a lot of the 3d printed things they're 3d printed and couldn't be made any other way yeah but it could be designed so that it could be built easier to begin with while there's a few things like certain rocket nozzles and stuff that for saving that last three grams really makes a difference for the majority of things, it's just poor engineering. It's not good engineering because you have better manufacturing capability. It's poor engineering to design it where it has to be built this way, has to spend extra money, and has to be done only by these particular uh, companies that are set up to do it. It's, it's bad engineering. Engineering should be focused towards what is easy and common manufacturing. And if it's not, then that's because you have a foo-foo company and you're going to sell things at a 20 or 30 times the normal cost that your competitors will. And you will get big money to start with for the first few years. Tell your competitors, look at this and say, hmm, we could just make a square shoulder a lot simpler. <clears throat> okay. So I get annoyed at some of that in engineering. Now let's get back to this. Okay. So we have our dividing head that we'd be using because we actually let the, <coughs> the machinist have some tools this time versus a CNC machine here that's going to, but let's step back a second. Let's not give this to those two options. Let's give this to a type of engineer that is just about gone away. <clears throat> They've replaced him by a CNC coder that normally has not actually studied machine work, but he is the CNC coder. He used to be a production engineer was the job. And a production engineer, would look at this and he'd say, well, let's get an Explorer head for it. And what an Explorer head is, is a head that goes on a drill press. It has multiple little spindles that line up on all of these. And we do this with a gang drill. So now you would have three drill presses. You'd pull a handle down or run it with a computer, an air cylinder, whatever you wanted. But it, one time, all center drill. It slides down, you drill all the holes, slide it down, it taps them all. So with manual equipment, which you can still buy all that stuff used, if you wanted to buy all the stuff to be able to make this part in about 45 seconds for all those holes, 
as a real number, you could do that by spending $3,000 buying surplus equipment. Or you could buy a CNC and you could get it to where it would do this in four or five minutes. Or you could do it with manual machines and probably spend 15 minutes doing it. You know, There's options, there's ways to do it, um, especially if we were talking about just plain drilling, just straight drilling holes here without the tapping, it really becomes big and quick when you just have a one time through and you're done very quick, especially if we set up our holes with drill bushings. But again, the level of the, um, <clears throat> the production engineer designing stuff for production, real production. When you're gonna make 10,000 of these, you can do stuff like that. Today, they don't. Today, if they're gonna make 10,000 of these, they figure that's a low run. So they put it on their CNC and if it takes a little while, time doesn't matter. CNCs run cheap today. Well, they run cheap for some companies. Other companies are cheaper yet, and they do manual machines. There's points for all of it, but you've got to look at what you're making. So when we're looking at this whole discussion of how to do something, and a lot of people bring it down to, instead of looking at the part, and we need to make 10,000 of them, 5,000, 100, or two of them, they say at a certain number of pieces, I got this especially in the comments on people when I mentioned that CNC is not always the best. Um, they say, nope, CNC is always the best. Uh, one specifically said, if you got over 2,000 parts to make. Well, I made 10,000 parts years ago on making some little pins. We did it with manual drill presses. Total uh, expenditure for the shop and equipment was probably $1,500 and there was money made there. So I didn't own the shop. That was another man that owned the shop. And we had other machinery there, but that was what we were using. And it worked out good, making 10,000 of those. We start looking at a definite number that makes a difference. Uh, kind of another scenario that I have in mind is, let's say I'm going into town, and I need to expedite some parts. So I can go into town, and I can drive to three different places and then I drive back to the shop with those parts, okay? But let's say that I need to stop at 30 parts, 30 places. Once I stop at 30 places, is it too much for me to drive from place to place? No. If it was, of course, then we would have to say that 30 places to drive is the cutoff where no longer can you drive, but you need to buy a self-driving car because it's too much for a man to do that many of anything. So after a certain number of places, we have to have a self-driving car. In fact, we should maybe have legislation for that. If you're gonna to drive to more than two places in a time, you should have to have a self-driving car. Or if you need to make more than five pieces at a time, you have to have a CNC. Hmm. I don't even want a self-driving car myself. I just don't want one. Uh, maybe, maybe someday if I lose my eyesight, uh, like my mom in her later years, there might be a point where I could tolerate it. But to me, cars are fun. I want to drive. If I got 200 places to go on an expediting run, run well, we're just going to have more fun and have to go a little quicker in between. I don't want somebody else to do it for me with a computer. 